Hello guys, and welcome back to another video. I'm Fitz, and this is my channel. Today is Halloween, and I hope you guys are having a very spooky day already. Today we're going to be exploring the aesthetic of Halloween as part of my ongoing series, Aesthetics Explored. All Halloween, all Hallow's Eve, Hallow's Evening, and All Saints' Eve. All different names for one holiday, Halloween. We know Halloween as a day to dress up, trick or treat, and have a party, but what really is it, and how has it influenced our modern day aesthetics? There are many theories about Halloween's origin. One of the most popular is that it comes from the Celtic Harvest Festival of Samhain. Samhain marks the beginning of the darker half of the year. It is thought that this time of year is when the threshold between this world and the other world was the easiest to cross. Part of the festival involved going door to door in costume, reciting verse in exchange for food or treats. These costumes were believed to disguise oneself from the other world's spirits and fairies. Sound at all familiar? Early Christians made All Hallows' Eve into a feast day, with vigils for the upcoming All Saints and All Souls' Day, which are November 1st and November 2nd. Slowly the holiday began to absorb more culture and customs, becoming Day of the Dead in Latin America, and Halloween as we know it today. There is a lot more to say, but that's a nice brief history for now. So, given that religious history, what does Halloween look like to us now? Well, in Western countries, it's largely separated from religion, in part due to popularization and in part due to capitalism monetizing the holiday. A normal Halloween in modern times looks a little like this. Trick-or-treating, costume contests, parties, spooky decor, and horror films. Halloween has come to be synonymous with frights, horror, and candy. And given these associations, what kind of aesthetic has grown up around it? Many darker aesthetics have absorbed Halloween into their subculture. Goth and emo are probably the most obvious. Many goth bands use spooky folklore for their names or their songs, and cultivate an association with Satanism and the devil. This in turn began to associate them with Halloween, the spookiest time of year, and the time, according to some modern Christians, and a leftover from Sam Samhain, when it was easiest for the devil to cross into our world. The goth subculture happily accepted this association, and when emo began to branch off from them, they took Halloween with them. Films like The Adams Family, Nightmare Before Christmas, and books like Interview with the Vampire fueled this love of the holiday and the spookier side of the year. Nowadays, modern Tumblr core and other aesthetics have taken up the mantle of Halloween lovers, albeit often with a softer side. The resurgence of Wicca seems to have also contributed to Halloween's modern aesthetic, with many Wiccans even celebrating Samhain now in their own way. So, Halloween. It's pagan and Christian, goth and emo. How do you create a coherent Halloween aesthetic from that? Two things. One, colour scheme. Halloween colours seem to almost always be associated with orange and black, orange from autumn and pumpkins and black for death and mourning, or green and purple, colours associated with sickness and evil. Two, incorporating the spooky, the goth, and horror. Things like pentagrams, skeletons, spiders, and pagan symbols all give off the Halloween vibe. Other things are often associated with Halloween as well, things like stripes, pumpkins, obviously, <laughs> uh, caution tape, for some reason, spiderwebs, voodoo and other sorts of pagan magic that evokes an idea of horror, ghosts, etc. However, this is something you can help incorporate into your look to create a more Halloween aesthetic. Now I'm going to give you a little lookbook. Just my interpretation of six different potential Halloween outfits. Scary, 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 scary,